Hello, welcome back to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Lana here with Jamie. How are you? Howdy. I'm doing well. Nice. <laughs> I always like in Toy Story. I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> I don't know why I like that sound bite lives in my head. I'm excited. As an We're aside, gonna... huh? I know this is totally, yeah, you're about to go into some real stuff, but I, as an aside, I cannot bring myself to watch the, what Toy Story is it where, where Andy goes to college? Do you know oh, the yeah. one? I can't bring myself to watch it now that I have a kid in college. It's too oh, emotional. It like is we, pretty emotional. The kids were saying we should do a Toy Story marathon. And I'm just thinking, no, I won't be able to make it. Like I could barely make it when I knew I had kids that may someday go to college, much right. less like having experienced it. And yeah. it's just, oh my goodness. But anyway, yeah. So but that one's Toy Story 3. Right. I Forky think it's was the one in the last, the four. I didn't yeah. like that one as much. I hate Toy Story 4. Me and too. I am not ashamed to go on record saying. Well, I was like, a little kind ashamed, of, but now I'm not because you mm, don't like it either. I, I am that movie. proudly a Toy Story 4 hater. Because if you think through Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 are all about staying with your best friend. And in Toy Story 4, it's like, eh, never mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It would yeah. be as if like we released episode 400 of the Praying Chris Women podcast and we're like, you know what? Prayer doesn't work. Jamie and I don't even like each other anymore. Bye. Like that's that's how much of an about face it feels. It would almost be as if one of us were to abandon the other and move to a different state. That it I know. would be Can that you imagine? awful and horrific. Yeah. No. <laughs> it would be it would be so horrific if that happened. No, no but I have not abandoned you. We are still besties still and here. still here so i still can reject toy story 4 and yeah. embrace in my the first brain three yeah in my brain thing. i refuse to admit that it exists i'm with you my kids are just like why not and i i can't put my finger on it but maybe that's why but i can't stand that movie i i yeah. do not like it but i love toy story 3 i thought they wrapped it up and made it you know kind of a beautiful ending they did. and they should have stopped while they were ahead yeah i mean yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Although, back to important topics at hand. No, I've got one more thing I've got to okay. add, and that is that I would be okay with the Toy Story sequel if and only if it had to do with Andy now has kids of his own and they are playing with his old toys. That is the only scenario where another Toy Story movie is okay, but Toy Story 4 kind Can of you, the timeline. Can you imagine that the toys find out Andy has a kid and they make their way back somehow? Like, on their that, own and he yeah. thinks that he just miraculously comes across them at a yard uh, sale or something and it, yeah he's like oh i and had a toy kid, just like this but it actually is it is and then yeah and then like the the words are just kind of still there oh yeah we're, we're gonna have to submit that idea for consideration we are. so pixar please get in touch with us i realize that i cannot continue podcasting Without one quick change, can you tell me what amazing, horrific faux pas I have made? <gasps> Your shirt. I need to go put on my sweater. I will be right back. So this was a very well-planned ahead of time reminder to people that we do have a YouTube channel. Do you see, mm -hmm. do you see what I'm doing there? I see. I like what you're doing there. <laughs> if you are on our YouTube channel. Not only do some of the episodes come out earlier, but you will see me in my signature pink sweater and you will get about 25 seconds of seeing Alana in something besides the pink sweater I wear whenever I record because I forgot. That's another Easter egg. Yeah, I actually, that word, you keep using it. I do not think it means what you think <laughs> it means. I've used that twice in the last two right? episodes. <laughs> I don't think I'm using them right. But I also, this morning as I was getting dressed, I was like, I'm going to wear my, this is not my official Alana pink sweater with uh -huh. short sleeves, but this is a pretty shirt close. that happens to have Alana pink in it. And I thought we should coordinate. <laughs> I, I love the coordinating look and feel. That is perfect. Me too. <laughs> well, we are continuing on in our discussion of Toy Story and our favorite Pixar movies. So Jamie, to, no, <laughs> we are continuing on in our discussion of Proverbs 31. So we're going to start today in verse 26 and see how far we get. But the verse 26, I'll read 26 and 27. 
She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So for our just for fun, tell me something about bread or bread making or your favorite type of bread recipe or your biggest, I'm going to make bread and it failed. Tell me something about bread in your world. So I recently got back to, I just bought my first loaf in many years of this Ezekiel bread. Have you ever Mm, heard mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. Like sprouted grains. All the grains. Yeah. And I really like it. It's like seedy and kind of, you know, like chunky. It's not your traditional Mm. bread. You're not going to like make a traditional peanut butter and jelly or something on it. If you're Mm -hmm. used to regular bread, it's like, it comes frozen And you can keep it refrigerated, but I think you do have to keep it refrigerated. And Mm -hmm. it's more dense, but you could make a really good peanut butter and jelly on it. I just know my kids would not eat it. But yeah, it's it's sprouted grains, which is supposed to be more healthy. Um, Mm. I think you have more protein when you've sprouted the seeds. I don't know. I, I haven't read up on it. All I know is I had a friend in Las Vegas that used to swear by that bread and I liked it, but I just stopped, kind of got away from it. So I just, that's what I just had. We took a little short break between recordings and I got some Ezekiel bread and it's based on Ezekiel something, something, one of the, do you, I don't know what verse it is, but it's no, about I wouldn't know. something. It's, it's a verse, a biblical verse about unless, sprouted grains. Unless the bread has dried bones in it. Or the bread has wheels within wheels in it. I'm not sure how I could tie it into Ezekiel very well. Ezekiel. So you've got your like, whatever, Ezekiel 513 bread, which is sprouted greens. But then you've got your Ezekiel 43 bread. I don't know what it is. You get extra calcium because. I mean, that would have a lot of calcium. Lots of calcium in the bone (laughs) meal. They do use bone meal in animal feed, Uh you know, from being Mm -hmm. an animal science major. And we did like you know, we did food rations and like did whole, yeah. a whole thing about how to balance diets and you use bone meal. So that could be another thing. Look, we've got the next Toy Story movie, like yeah. practically scripted out. We've got a bread product. Like we're going to have to not air this and just like pursue this right. entrepreneurship. And we then- can air it after we get the trademarks and patents taken care of. That's a good idea. All right. So, so if you're if, listening to this, this yep. has been patented. Exactly. The patents are, well, patents are pending, which means you still can't steal the idea. Oh, my, I like it. It's my pending. understanding. Sorry. Patent pending is good enough. And maybe if, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Let's see. I don't have many super interesting bread stories. I do like a good sourdough. And I think if I learned, like I'm adding different just culinary experiments to my life. So a couple years ago, I learned how to make kombucha, and that was really good. You taught me, and it was really good. Oh, and that's I right. I completely forgot about that. Oh, we love it, and it, it turned out so well. I just I haven't done it since we moved, and I kind of yeah. got away from it, but I love it. It's so good. Yeah. It's like store then, good. Yeah, I really like how it turned out, too. And then I've been doing some like lacto-fermented veggies, which has been fun. I think my next thing, like if I got to where I was ready to add a new thing and unless anyone gets wrong and they're like, I'm not in the kitchen hours. It really, it's like maybe once a month where I'm like, oh, I've got some free time. Maybe I'll just piddle around in the kitchen today. But learning how to make really good sourdough would be very fulfilling and rewarding for me. So I grew up near San Francisco, which is of course, like you get the best sourdough. And in Alaska, sourdough is definitely a thing because oh, it is. all of it's the, huge. yeah, all the miners, I guess it was the type that traveled well or something to the point where if somebody has lived in Alaska their whole life, they're called a sourdough. Well, I honestly, I actually think it's actually, there might be, you might have to be from a certain racial background to also be considered a sourdough. I never thought about that, but I anyway. I think you do. No, <laughs> okay. you can be any racial background. It's just, if you've lived there, like I remember asking a friend who was born and raised there, Mm -hmm. about I said so when do we become a sourdough and he (laughs) laughed and was like Jamie you're never never gonna gonna be a sourdough no yeah yeah probably because I wasn't born and raised there and you could probably be raised there and not born there and still be considered one maybe maybe but it can apply um, to anyone who's just like old 
old school, you know, good old, good old boys and girls, Alaskans, you know, Yeah, whether my you only were born question there. is, I, I think, I don't think it applies as much to like Alaska natives, um, Right. Exactly. right? Because that's, No, I think I, it's, yeah. yeah. So Right. I think anyway, that's true. <laughs> so yes, it's because of my background and because of my palate, I think that learning sourdough would make a lot of sense. It would. So, And I know yeah. my aunt and my uncle are both into it. My dad's two, two of my dad's siblings. They like kind of geek out over sourdough and Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's a cool thing. Like I, I want to get into it, but that's just another thing where I'm like, mm, I don't know yet, but that's on my list too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I do seasons of making bread from scratch and Alaska Me is too. a little trickier because like your house isn't like it, everything takes longer to rise. It's almost like you, you, when you need a high altitude adjustment, it's almost like you need a high longitude adjustment for that kind of stuff. So I honestly, to, to do it well, I would probably need like somebody who lives here to show me what they do as opposed to following like some YouTuber from, you know, Florida or something. Yeah. Well, have you heard of friendship bread? Yes, I like that. Well, I don't like I how it tastes, but I do like the concept you of don't it. like how it tastes. Oh my gosh. Too I love sweet it. for me, which It's I don't say so about good. a lot of things. Yeah. I love friendship bread, but it's the same idea of, you know, you pass on your starter and, you know, then it, it was kind of like, like before social media and, and even before email and internet and online interactions, like in the days where chain mail was Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. literally It, I was going to say, a letter that yep. would come to you and you would add your name to the list Yep. or whatever, like that's, yeah, that's crazy for those of us that remember, but set, but friendship bread was kind of like sort The of a chain unifying mail. connecting thing, right? Like you, it builds community because you're taking this thing, you're letting it rise for however many days and you're splitting it into four or however many it was and you're giving some away and it's just kind of real life kind of community before there was all of this like global community online. Yeah, it is. So if people aren't familiar, yeah, you are given a, a loaf and you are given a starter. And so you eat the loaf and then you take the starter and it comes with kind of elaborate instructions. And basically that starter you make into more starter and you make into more loaves and then you give it to people. Now, this is me being cynical. I think maybe the other thing I don't love about it is if you are given friendship bread and you're not in the mood to do anything with it. You know what I mean? It's like, Do not break this chain I know. or bad things will happen. <laughs> like, I know there's a quote from Sheldon in Big Bang Theory. He's like, this isn't a gift. This is an obligation, <laughs> you know? So depending on your frame of mind, when you get it, what else you've got going on in your world, it can be a beautiful blessing or it could be, oh no, one Here's more thing a puppy. that I'm just going to, yeah, right. Or, or even like, here's a house plan. I, I, I hate giving houseplants as gifts unless it's somebody I know loves houseplants, Right. right? Because otherwise, like I was at my grandma's a couple of years ago and she had very pretty, healthy bamboo growing in a vase on her window. So I was like, wow, grandma, that's really pretty. That's a pretty bamboo plant. It's like, yeah. We got it at the senior center a year ago. And I like, she was just like, and I got to keep it alive, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I do. I feel that way about orchids. I love them so much, those beautiful orchid plants, and they're so pretty, but I just feel like I've, I've killed several, and they're really pretty, and I've tried, and they seem to be very easy to take care of because they say, just put two ice cubes in every week, and it's fine. It's not fine. Yeah, no, orchids tend, yeah, I, I think of orchids as being very temperamental. Mm hmm So, Yeah. well, how about let's pray for our episode and then we can jump in. Sounds good. God, we just pray that this day would bring glory to you, that this discussion would just help us all to focus more on what you want from us. And, and even more than that, how we can celebrate womanhood and celebrate ourselves, celebrate other women and, and just bring us together in unity. I just pray specifically, even just as I read these first couple of verses, I'm already seeing things that apply to my own life in terms of wanting to do better 
And I just continue to pray, Lord, that as you enlighten us with your Holy Spirit, as you bring to mind things that you want us to do or to change or to get better at, that you do that while also just protecting us from the lies of the enemy, protecting us from any negative self-talk or belittling ourselves or feeling in, inferior to others that we feel do these things better than we do. Thank you for how you've made us. Thank you that each of us is an individual. Each of us is a daughter of the King and we have intrinsic value and you love us for who we are right at this moment without any changes, without any cleaning up. And, and we just pray that we would rest in that even as we look forward to becoming more like Christ and becoming more of the woman that you want us to be. Amen. All right. So if we're going to start in verse 26, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. I'm going to lead us or start us with another just for fun. Tell me about one of your favorite teachers growing up. Oh man, I had so or many. Just somebody that you learned a lot from. It doesn't have to necessarily have been a school teacher. Okay, man, I had so many, so many amazing teachers and influential people. I will say, so one of my, one of the most influential teachers that I had was my, my high school biology teacher. He was my biology teacher. He was my AP biology teacher. He was also my swim coach all four years of high school. So it was like, I saw him a lot. I saw him several mornings a week. In the summer, I saw him sometimes and saw him in class. You know, I think I had him at least for two years of biology. So, and his name was Mr. Bellinger. And he was just one of those guys that he knew so much about so many things. He had a ton of wisdom, but more than just teaching us, like some of the most memorable lectures from him in my mind are ones where he just talked about life and treating people with dignity and with respect. If people made ignorant comments, whether it was about science or about politics or about whatever, he was always very like, I don't know, he was just one of those people that just seemed very wise, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't agree with everything that he said politically or even scientifically all the time. But he was so, he just had a wisdom about him and he loved his students so much. Like he really, he cared about us beyond just the learning. He cared mm -hmm. about the kind of humans we were becoming. And I loved that. That was, he was a great guy. And I actually am still friends with him on Facebook and very sad. We just had our 30th high school reunion recently back in Maryland. And I really, really wanted to make it, but there just wasn't any way we were moving. We had, you know, hockey stuff. There's just no way I could have done it. But, but I loved Facebook, speaking of social media, bringing us together because I got to kind of follow the reunion, but he showed up for that Fine. reunion as well oh, as a couple cool. of other teachers just because he's that loved. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. I actually also was really influenced by my high school AP bio teacher. Mm -hmm. That's, he was the reason I got into pre-med the reason I became a biology right? major yeah same um, here reason I went into science that's funny I remember when so he was very religious and if I remember right, he was very very strict catholic and because it was ap bio we had a we had a kind of funny thing in our school where the the honors classes were not the specific ap curriculum but they were at a similar level and they would prepare you for the AP tests, even though they weren't like official AP classes, we would still take the AP tests if we wanted to. And he, so this is in Michigan and it wasn't really Bible Belt, but moving there from California, it definitely had more Christian influence in my schools in California. And so in my high school bio class, we didn't go into evolution or natural selection, but if you wanted to take the AP bio test, you needed some background in it. So he did maybe like a week of coming in early in the morning for people who were going to take the AP test. And he basically gave us a crash course. Here's what you need to know about evolution and natural selection in order to pass the AP bio test. But he prefaced it with kind of, he prefaced it in a way where you knew he was not really allowed or not willing to say, I do not believe in any of this, but 
he talked about how basically my takeaway was like, faith is faith. This part of science is what you learn to pass a test. They don't need to conflict with each other. Mm-hmm. You are welcome to believe this. You are welcome to, and then he winks at it all and says, God bless you. <laughs> you know, kind of as his, now let's get into it. Awesome. So yeah, he was, he was really influential. I've talked to you a tiny bit about my violin teacher. She's also one that I would for sure credit with. Yeah. We talked a lot about just what was going on at school. You know, like we never started with just, okay, how'd you practice this week? You know, we always started with, Hey, how's your classes going? How's this, you know? And if I remember right, she was the first adult outside of the family where we would have like meaningful conversations that wasn't just small talk. Do you know what I mean? Like kind of yeah. one-on-one because like the one-on-one. she viewed you as a human and not as just a human. A kid. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like you are here to learn from me. It was, right. you know, like, I don't think I would have ever put it into words, but it was almost like we were friends, you know? Right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> and I recently reconnected with her, which is very, very special. I so, love that story. That's so neat. Yeah. So when we read this verse, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Who are some people that jump out to you? Like, who does this first make you think of? Speaking with wisdom, you know, I think of my my, my mother-in-law mm-hmm. is like, she's just someone who is wise and kind of one of the first people I'll go to if I need prayer for something, mm-hmm. if I'm, you know, having a problem. Um, and she is always, she's always bringing scripture into conversations Mm -hmm. like she just where it talks about faithful instruction is on her tongue like it's just always not in an obnoxious way at all it's just second nature to her it's not like like a parody of someone that just oh everything I say is scripture but Mm -hmm. she just brings it into everything just because it's such a part of her life like the bible is such a part of her life she's you know been teaching the bible for many years in addition to just reading it herself and mentoring young women that she just brings it in. And I love that about her. And I love when my kids get to be around that because it's just such a cool reinforcement of like, so another adult bringing in scriptural wisdom, not just, Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good advice, you know, but this is what the Bible says. And it might look a lot different from, what the world tells you or typical wisdom, but you know, I just, yeah. So I would say she's kind of the first person that comes to my mind. Yeah. She's the first person. There are others. Definitely. What about you? I think about two different couples that were really instrumental in my young adult life. They're the two couples that basically turned into Carl and Sandy in my Kennedy books. Yeah. One was the pastor and his wife at this church Scott was going to when we met and the pastor that married us. And one was the couple who ran the girls home where I worked before Scott and I got married. Both, yeah, really just poured into, to me, poured into Scott, poured into our relationship. That's, that's what stands out to me. And then I'm actually, I have a friend these days who's probably in her, let me do quick math. She's probably close to 80. And again, kind of like my violin teacher's like, oh, like it feels a tiny bit funny to call this person like just a friend. Do you know what I mean? Like she's not a teacher, she's not a coworker, but definitely a friend. And so, yeah, I, I love that we can learn from people with so much more life experience than we've got at the moment, which, which again, and I think God brings those people into your life, you know, sometimes for seasons, sometimes forever. And if you're missing that in your life, I think that that would absolutely be a point to pray about because no matter where you are, you can learn from others or you can be encouraged by others. And it doesn't always have to be a mentor relationship, right? Sometimes it could just be a friendship, (laughs) but sometimes you're friends with somebody who is older and wiser than you are, and you can get some good encouragement or inspiration or nuggets and pearls of wisdom. There's, there's lots there. My grandma on my dad's side, not the, not the praying grandma I always talk about. I'm sure she does pray too. 
different grandma though than what our listeners are used to hearing about. She's got some really good one-liners that that often stick with me. One of my favorites is money isn't everything, but it can really help in certain situations, you know, and it's just a sense <laughs> of like, no, you don't need to make it your life goal to earn money, but you also don't need to treat it like it's like the most evil thing, right? In the world. Right. It's just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I have an aunt, my, my dad's sister, who is just when I, she's another one, she speaks with wisdom. And the thing about her is I can always count on her to be very introspective and she quietly thinks about things before she speaks about them, but she's very frank and I love it. Like she's not afraid to say, oh, so this is going on and then ask a question that you would not think that someone, you know, you, you kind of just expect mm. the common like, oh, that's great for you. Right. Good. Right. All right. But she, I think it's, it's part that she cares enough to ask the deeper questions and to challenge some of the ideas or the decisions mm-hmm. very much matter of factly, not in any way mean, in fact, very supportive, very loving and just, but there's a deep wisdom in that, in knowing what questions to ask someone. It's never mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a bad idea. It's yeah. always a probing question that makes me think about the situation. And I think that is a skill that can be cultivated, but it's also a gift in some people. They, I think some people don't have to work as hard at it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And from her, I think it comes from caring though. I think it comes from a root of caring enough about a person to want to ask any more questions and not just be like, good for you. Good luck mm-hmm. with that. <laughs> right. Or to be the opposite and to give you directives or, you know, to give you unsolicited advice. That's yeah. not always useful. And that's not always received very well. No, it's, but it's asking probing questions and mm-hmm. you are the same way. You're another person that's in that category of people that I know and appreciate is you are, you know, in the past, you don't do it all the time but you have done it on very important occasions where it's been very much needed and wanted and you'll just ask a question and it's very, I just love that. I want to be like that. I know I'm not as I'm not like that. I am too afraid and timid most of the time of how people will take it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I I just don't think I'm as good at that or good at all at that. And that's kind of, that's one of the things that when I read this, I thought she speaks with wisdom. Like I want to be the kind of person that doesn't value peace over truth Mm -hmm. and wisdom. Yeah. And right now. Yeah, that can be hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I think I'm growing in that area, but even just to acknowledge that and to desire that, I mean, isn't there a verse that talks about we like God places the desire yeah. in us to want to become. Yeah. Like, it I'm is God really who it. works in you to will and to act according to his purpose. Right. So even that having the it. desire, yes. maybe the desire, I mean, not maybe the desire itself comes from right. God. Yeah. Know? And it's a beginning. I think it's a beginning of something yeah. in like, you know, in, in the next phase of life, the next thing next I iteration. want to be, next iteration <laughs> of life that I want to be more like that because that is definitely a quality. And so what do you think are just some in general, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. What are some practical ways you think that would look like in today's woman? I think it doesn't look like the person who just gives unsolicited advice, you know, I think there is a gift in knowing how to present it. Going Mm -hmm. back to what you were saying though, when you were talking about, I forget if it was your aunt or your somebody who, you know, was always putting scripture into things. Oh yeah. My mother-in-law. That's where I go. I'm like, Oh, that's not me, you know, but, and so sometimes we can, like, if I tried to be that person, it would, it would come across as fake and not genuine. And like, what are you, the walking concordance, (laughs) you know? 
and and we talk about that so much in prayers like pray according to the the gifts that god has given you so maybe yeah. you know maybe in your case the question side of things maybe that isn't your communication style right, right? maybe possible. yours is more just like you're you're so good at hey can we stop and pray for that and if if i turned into that kind of person again it would feel pushy because that doesn't feel like me <laughs> i'd be pushing myself to say that kind of stuff and so then the hearer would also like sense that it wasn't coming from like a genuine place. So that is a good reminder. As we look at some of the qualities that we love about women mm -hmm. in general and the women in our lives to always, you know, always, always have that like undercurrent. I can hear those little paws. Can you hear the clicking I can't see Archie, but I can hear his little tip tacky claws. That was cute. See if he can come. See if he'll get up. He probably won't. But okay. just, you know, that undercurrent of pray like you, be the way exactly. God made you and not like someone else. And maybe even like, as I think about that, because yeah, if these things come naturally, that's great. And if they don't, what are the things about these people? So I'm thinking about my aunt, who's very direct and very mm -hmm. probing with her questions in a way mm -hmm. that draws out wisdom in me also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what do I love about that? I love the fact that she cares, that she deeply cares, not just about our surface interaction, but she cares deeply about my best interest. And the way that comes out with her is that she asks probing questions when mm -hmm. she thinks, you know, really about anything, not even when she thinks I'm making a bad decision or doing something that she wouldn't do. Like, it's just, she just asks lots of questions. So I can just think, okay, I love the fact that she cares deeply, not just about surface relationship, but about me as a person and about the outcome. So maybe I can just start with that and say, okay, mm -hmm. Let me just focus on how much I care about this person and, you know, however that comes out, maybe I pray for them mm -hmm. behind the scenes or yep. pray on the spot with them when they need right. it. Um, and maybe I leave the rest to God because I don't yeah. feel comfortable asking a probing question because it's crossing a line in my mind. I don't right. know. Yeah. And then with my, my mother-in-law, what do I love about her? It's not just that she pulls scripture into everything. It's that she knows scripture so well that it is just part of who she is and how she mm -hmm. looks at the world. So I can say, okay, one goal I can have is just to read the Bible more and, you know, just to, to incorporate scripture in my life in a way that makes it even more a part of my life than, than it has been. I don't know. Mm -hmm. In that way, making the goal, not so much acting like someone else or doing the right. thing they're doing, <laughs> but reflecting the the root quality that they reflect mm. that you admire, if that makes sense. Exactly. Well, and when you were talking about filling yourself with scripture so that you had wisdom to share with others, it reminds me of when we talk about creativity, you know, I consider some of my job as a writer is to inspire my creative self. Like yesterday, I found this live oh, yeah. concert on YouTube and it was this maybe like hundred person chorus singing songs from all over the Americas. So, oh, wow. you know, the Caribbean, Native American, spirituals, jazz, Appalachians, like all over. And it was, it was inspiring to my soul and it was inspiring to my creativity, which I consider to be an important part of my job in order to have creative output. Just like if I were writing a rom-com, part of my job, in my opinion, and this probably isn't the same for every author, but for me, the way I work, part of my job would be to like listen to a lot of stand-up comedians, right? Like to fill my humor reservoir so mm -hmm. that it would spill out when it came to write. And I think when we're talking about wanting to be women who speak with wisdom, part of our job is filling our soul with scripture so that when it comes time for us to give wisdom to others, it just kind of bubbles over. We're not having to draw really, really deep, <laughs> you know, it's just there. Yeah. And I think a little earlier, you hit the nail on the head with wisdom. Another component of wisdom, other than just filling yourself with wisdom is learning when not to speak and being yes. thoughtful about what you're saying mm -hmm. and when you're saying it 
reading a room, waiting for the right timing. I know yes. I am notorious in our marriage, <laughs> my husband and I. This is like, you know, you've got the ongoing things in, in everyone's marriage. One of our ongoing things is he's just like, look, if you had said that at a different time, I would have reacted so much differently. And I'm getting better. I, I'm sensing a theme really in these last couple of episodes. I've really been reflecting and thinking, <laughs> you know, God is doing a work in me. I'm getting better. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but timing is everything. And what I have seen is when I, I have a tendency to have a thought and it becomes really important to me to get that thought out as soon as I have it. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm impulsive, if I'm impatient, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but, um, but I just have this desire to get the thought out. And so I'll text him or call him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be a deep, dark conversation about our right. marriage. It's just, you know, like, well, can we wait and talk about that when such right. and such? So, <laughs> this doesn't need to be decided right now, you yeah. know, like, but it goes the, the same middle. way. Yeah. 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 Like we're in the middle of church. I don't think we need to decide where we're going to spend Christmas two years from now. <laughs> that is literally the kind of thing I'll do. <laughs> so Hilarious. anyway, but yeah, but, but it, in the, in terms of wisdom and seeking wisdom, I really think that the that that's a big one and you mentioned that and I'm glad you did because it's important yeah. when I need to work on. Yeah, there's wisdom of timing. I think if you read Proverbs, which is all about wisdom, so much of it is knowing when to hold your tongue. I think especially in parenting, there are times where it's not quite pick your battles, but that's kind of the closest equivalent I can think of. It's like, yep. I see that this behavior at some point is going to need to be addressed, or I have this concern about my child that I'm not going to blurt out right now. I'm, you know, I, I love the verse about Mary and the language it uses, like she treasured up these things and stored them in her heart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those thoughts or those fears come in and we're not meant to act on them right away. We're meant to kind of hold on to them, right? Like not forget them, not ignore it, but say, okay, I'm concerned about this, but now's not the time to worry about it. You know, it would be like if when Silas was a baby in the NICU on a ventilator and I look and his toes funny shaped, right? Like, I'm not going to bring that up to the doctor and be like, should I be worried about my son's toe? Like there are, <laughs> there's a priority of, of what's to be focused on and what to, you know, bring up. So like maybe your, your kid is learning how to not like throw massive tantrums that might not be the wise time to also teach them like something very cerebral and less important in the grand scheme of being, you know, of growing up into a functioning adult, right? It might not be the time to teach them how to order a pizza <laughs> like we were talking about in our last episode. And yeah, there's wisdom in knowing when to bring things up, how to bring them up, when not to bring them up. The only thing I would say is if you know that there's something that needs to be addressed with somebody, you pray about it. You pray for the right time. You pray for wisdom. You don't feel impatient in your soul. And then you bring it up and it doesn't go well. That's not on you. That's the one, the one thing I would say is you can still do everything right. Like the story of Esther, I really see her as somebody who understood the importance of timing in prayer before oh, yeah. going into a difficult discussion. Even if, so, she, you know, she did everything. She checked all the boxes. She fasted. She had others praying for her. She made it a feast so that her husband would feel maybe just relaxed or loved or, you know, she made it a a welcoming type of environment. You know, I can picture her like, make sure he's got all his favorite foods, you know, that kind of thing. If it still hadn't gone well and he had said, I don't like your request, now I'm going to kill you. My opinion is she doesn't have to be sorry and be like, oh, rats, I picked the wrong time. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes like, people are just people. And... Yeah, that's on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I see another element of wisdom just in parenting. Like I think of, especially when your kids start to get older, but even when they're little, as a mama bear, you know, sometimes things will happen to your kids and you get angry. 
I think of things that happen on the ice when my kids are playing hockey mm -hmm. that I don't like, kids taking cheap shots or mm -hmm. saying nasty things or stuff that happens in the locker room with the kids as the boys got older, especially our daughter mm -hmm. has had no negative experiences. But there have been some incidents in the locker room mm -hmm. where there have been yeah. disagreements and things said that were really not appropriate or nice. Mm -hmm. And your first, my first inclination is to want to get retribution or at the very least talk really bad about that kid. We're talking mm -hmm. about children though, mm -hmm. you know? And so rather than talking badly about a kid to my kid who has been wronged by that kid, part of wisdom and faithful instruction is keeping control of your own emotions yeah. and modeling self-control. And even if you feel like you want to say really nasty, mean things about people that do your kids wrong in certain mm -hmm. ways, whether it's at school or wherever else, you don't. And instead, you lovingly point your kid toward a more appropriate response. And yeah. That goes into, you know, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, um, talking conversations about how to respond with dignity, how to respond with, with, with Christ-like behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that where all of that, I think some of wisdom though, is, and I, I'm, this is my opinion. I have to give a, like a disclaimer because I know a lot of people might disagree. So I'm just going to say, this is my opinion. What I've come to mm -hmm. believe is especially with boys in very physical contact sports where emotions are high things happen in any kind whether it's sports or not when you have kids in situations with bullies i believe there's a time to allow that kid to work things out in their own way without helicoptering and without micromanaging their responses even if it means that they make mistakes along the way. And I think there's a wisdom in that, but that's just kind of what I've come to see. And then you can take it a step further. My husband and I disagree on the course of Christ likeness and whether mm -hmm. or not there's a time when it comes to maybe a physical altercation, mm -hmm. you know, just turning, this is very <laughs> turning the tables, real world problem, turning <laughs> the other cheek or fighting back to defend yourself and yeah. not get bullied for the rest of the year, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are all gray areas that everyone in their family needs to come to terms with themselves. Wisdom is messy and wisdom can, you could think you have a nugget of wisdom and by trial and error realize that was the wrong thing to do. And then you just become wiser. So I think as we strive mm -hmm. for wisdom, we also need to realize that we're going to make mistakes, whether it's in our own interactions with people, with our yeah. interactions with children, with spouses. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the bottom line has always got to be to pray because, you know, if you have a decision to make and you're not sure which one is the wise way to go, or if you and your spouse disagree on the course of action or the advice that you want to give your kid or whatever, you know, it all goes back to prayer, I guess. Mm hmm yeah. No, I don't think what you said is controversial at all in terms okay. of, yeah, we need to allow our children to learn how to handle things, right? Like you can't be 27 years old and your boss hurts your feeling and expect your mom to show up to the office and take care of it for you, you know? Which I would love to do. I would love to do that for the rest of all of my kids' lives, but I'm just, uh -huh. yeah, I'm realizing you can't do that. So, oh, no. yeah. And I think there is a grace in allowing them to be who they're going to be, to learn yeah. from their mistakes and to know, to make sure they know that you're there when they do need advice. I think there comes a point where kind of like with a husband and wife or even, you know, like friends, we can say, okay, do you want advice or do you just want to vent Right? right. There can, there can That's come a, a point question. where we can treat our older children or our adult children kind of the same. Hey, do you just want mom to listen to you? Or do you want me to tell you what I think you should do? And I think there's some respect in getting permission to speak into someone. And 
flip side, I think it's very important that we are all careful to screen who we do open our hearts up to receive wisdom from. Like I got advice from moms as a brand new mom that looking back, I'm like, why am I listening to this person who's never even had kids telling me like the best way to sleep train or the best way to breastfeed or things like that. So we need to be careful about who we Oh, Gimli, can you hear him? He's just whining I can in the back. hear him whining. Does he want to come in? No, I brought him in because I'm home alone now during the days and I didn't want him like getting into everything, but he's getting kind of restless. So maybe this is our sign that we'll wrap, <laughs> wrap this episode up soon. But just like there comes a point where in order to be respectful to our older children or adult children or our spouse or our friends, we ask for permission to speak wisdom into their lives. I think it is critically important that we are careful about who we receive wisdom from because you're going to get conflicting ideas. Some people are going to tell you a piece of advice that was perfect for them. And if you followed it, it would be devastating for you. Right. And so you need to yeah, just be careful about that side of things. And we will say that Gimli also agrees and hopes that everybody has a great day. And thank you for joining us.